Well, good afternoon. Um, as you may be aware, there was a COVID Ready Committee meeting this afternoon, and in addition to that COVID Ready Committee, where I received advice from the various participants, I have also had further and ongoing conversations with SA Health, which has included advice, recommendations, and uh, different conversations regarding the current status of our public activities direction. As a result of those conversations in the CRC committee meeting today, I have made the determination as follows. As at 0001 hours on Saturday the 26th of February, so one minute past midnight on the 26th of February, the following changes will come into effect for our public activities direction. For hospitality, venues may operate at one person per two square metres capacity indoors with stand-up consumption permitted. Hospitality venues may operate at three people per four square metres capacity indoors where there is only seated consumption. Venues with a combination of standing and seated consumption indoors must operate at one person per two square metres. Buffets are now permitted and there is no change to the current arrangements for outdoor hospitality. Private functions. Private functions in hospitality venues are permitted at one person per two square metres to a maximum of 150 people, stand-up consumption, dancing and singing is permitted. The same conditions apply to private activities in non-hospitality venues, not including residential premises, which remain at 50 people maximum. Outdoor events, not, in, not related to hospitality. Fully seated outdoor events may operate without density restrictions. Stand-up or a combination of seated and standing outdoor events may operate at three people per first square metres. And for events that cater to a thousand or more patrons, all other requirements of COVID management plans will still apply. Indoor events. Fully seated indoor ev events may operate at three people per four square metres. A combination of seated and standing indoor events may operate at one person per two square metres. These changes have come about as a result of the current situation of COVID-19 in South Australia. Uh, the vaccination rates, hospitalisation rates and the case numbers that have been monitored on a daily basis and I'm happy to take any questions. Commissioner, what prompted uh, the sudden change today? Was that your confidence in South Australia's vaccination rate or decline? Well, I wouldn't describe this as a sudden change. Uh, the commitment was made several weeks ago that each fortnight uh, There'd be a, the aim would be to ease restrictions in South Australia um, and that was seen as a gradual and proportionate response to the, the activities uh, around COVID-19 and the spread of uh, Omicron particularly through South Australia. The main, and the main consideration for us, I believe, is um, the hospitalisation rates and ensuring that our health system is able to cope with additional cases in the community. And whilst we may have seen fluctuations in case numbers in South Australia, we haven't seen that specifically translating to ongoing and increasing uh, admission rates in our hospitals. So that is the key driver here. Yes, sir, the case numbers the last couple of days have, have spiked from the previous several days, but you didn't see any need to wait and see how that washes out? Well, we, we need to make a decision at some point. Um, we particularly note the seven day rolling average of cases. And as I said just a moment ago, uh, we are mindful of uh, the capacity of the health system to accommodate uh, positive cases that require uh, additional medical attention. And it's also worth noting that the, the application of the Emergency Management Act requires us to make sure that what we have in place at any given time is reasonable and appropriate for the circumstances we're facing. This does mean that if we were to see a significant increase in uh, cases that did put uh, excessive pressure on the health system that we may have to reintroduce restrictions to keep on top of that. We're hopeful that that doesn't occur. Uh, all of the indicators are that things are looking very positive in South Australia, notwithstanding there are fluctuations in case numbers based on the sorts of activities that are permitted to occur, such as children returning to school. Uh, only within the context of a private gathering. Private function, sorry. Private function. There was no discussion today about the relaxation around mask rules. Uh, it hasn't been addressed by COVID Ready Committee today. Mask requirements remain the same. Can you clarify in the time which um, setting Adelaide Oval would fall under? Well, Adelaide Oval would be an outdoor event. Uh, so the, 
for, for want of a better phrase, the, the outdoor bowl uh, where it's fully seated would be able to accommodate uh, the normal capacity arrangements without any restriction. But it must be stressed that that is for fully seated. So if there is any standing and seated, then that would impact on their density arrangements. Uh, any event that might be held in private function rooms or other areas uh, indoors would be subject to the density requirements applied to indoor activities. How come this is coming into effect from Saturday and not Friday? You know, it might be good for Friday night traders to have these restrictions. Well, that's a good question. Uh, Obviously, we're making the announcement quite late today. We had the COVID ready committee, uh, committee meeting um, at 1.30 this afternoon. It went for about an hour. Uh, I was required to take into consideration the information that was provided in that meeting. Uh, there are some complexities to getting this right and businesses need to understand what their obligations are. My team are now drafting the direction and the changes to that direction, which will take some time. Uh, this also gives businesses an opportunity to prepare for the changes that are coming into effect at one minute past midnight on Saturday. So there will be no time wasted in this, uh, but it will take some time to finalise that direction tomorrow. Well, do you expect... Because the Premiership on the COVID Ready Committee, and obviously we're in an election campaign at the moment. Are you able to talk through exactly what his role in that committee is in terms of just if he able to make suggestions on the timing of relaxed restrictions? Uh, the, the Premier, like any other member of the committee, engages in conversations. Uh, he has views, he shares those views, as do other members of the committee. Um, I take into consideration the views put by various members and I take those into account when I'm making my decision. Do you expect to see case numbers rise significantly as a result of these changes? Uh, there is a potential for case numbers to rise. Uh, as I said, uh, we do expect fluctuations, uh, but we will be watching closely the impact it has on hospital admissions particularly, and obviously the, the number of people in ICU. Uh, but we are confident at this stage that the system has the capacity to deal with some increases, but we will be responding to that if it looks like it is getting beyond the capacity of the system. Commissioner, do you know how many officers are off at the moment due to the vaccine mandate? Uh, 70, 72 officers is my uh, recollection. If it's not 72, it's very close to that. Is that having much impact on suburban patrols or staffing resources? Oh, look, uh, given where we were just a few months ago, where we had between 350 and 600 police officers dedicated to COVID-19 duties taken away from their substantive roles, uh, we are in a much better position uh, than we were back then. And I can say that the, uh, the mandate for police officers to be vaccinated is reviewed on a regular basis, uh, and we are watching closely uh, for any opportunity to relax that requirement. Um, so it's not something that we've made the decision on set in stone. We do review it continuously. Can you speak that number that was posted along those lines? Um, just in the last 10 minutes or so, Frontline members advised the City Association today that the duty imposed on them to conduct COVID compliance checks is crippling their ability to respond to calls for assistance from the public. This morning, the Association founded almost 70 outstanding checks in one district alone and we feel that it to be performed by officers taken away from frontline patrol duty. Do you have a response to that? Yeah, well, I would, I would re reject that in, out of hand. It's, uh, it is the case that we do have uh, staff dedicated to COVID-19 compliance and uh, general duties patrols and other staff in districts and other branches are uh, obviously uh, required as a part of their duties when they identify breaches to deal with those breaches, but there's no specific taskings to people and responding to calls for assistance from the community would be number one priority. So whilst there may be some tasks for COVID-19 compliance that remain unresolved. That is not a priority for us in the first instance. Commissioner, we're working from here with restrictions. If numbers do start to spike as a result of this, will you start scaling it back with more restrictions or can you commit that, you know, they won't be more restrictions? Uh, look, we can't commit to no more restrictions. Uh, we are at the mercy of the pandemic. Uh, things are looking good at the moment. Uh, we, I think we've done exceptionally well in managing the introduction of COVID-19 into South Australia. It was always going to happen. Uh, so far, I think it's uh, gone quite well in terms of staying within capacity. Um, that's the primary uh, KPI here, is to make sure that our hospital system can cater to those people who require medical assistance. That's the advice I'm provided, so we're acting on, on that advice. There is just no capacity for us to give a blanket commitment that we won't go backwards. We, we'll, we're hopeful that we don't have to. Things are looking good and we'll hopefully, hopefully keep moving in the direction we're moving in now. Are we keeping moving forward in that fortnightly blocks and were there things that were discussed today that have been pushed to that, you know, two Friday time? 
Uh, we will keep moving in fortnightly blocks, uh, but we do review on a regular basis. We don't just wait until the Thursday before a, uh, a fortnightly conclusion. Um, there were things discussed today that will probably be brought up again on the agenda for uh, the, few, the, the meetings for, of CRC between now and a fortnight. Um, we're, we're hopeful that we get to a point where we are uh, free of as many restrictions as possible and hit what might be called a baseline in terms of what, what requirements we have in place for the South Australian community, which includes QR check-ins, uh, uh, close contact quarantining, isolation of positive cases, um, all of those sorts of things we have in place at the moment to ensure the safety of the broader community. And what Mark, things were on the agenda today that might be quite make the cut today? Uh, look, I don't, have, I don't have that specific list with me, Alan. Um, it, it, was a, it was a constructive conversation uh, focused on primarily on the things that I've spoken about today and there were presentations and information provided that informed the decision making. Well, you talked about that baseline, will masks be a part of that as well? Are they here to stay for it? Look, I don't think masks are here to stay uh, forever. Um, I hope not. But uh, at this point in time, there was no conversation about the wearing of masks. Masks are still recognised as the, the best thing you can do to protect yourself from infection and to protect others from being infected. So uh, I think there's a strong uh, rationale for keeping masks in place at the moment, but they'll certainly be on the agenda for a point in time when the requirement to wear masks will be removed. But the the individual decision making re regarding wearing masks will still remain for people to make their own choices. Is there any issue? Some of the decision making compared to other states, for example, Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland, are all drastically lifted their mask rules. Are, are, how far are we behind, I guess, the apple when it comes to following what they might be introducing or do we, do we base any of our decisions off what they've made? We certainly keep an eye on what uh, decisions and restrictions they have in other jurisdictions. Um, but I wouldn't describe South Australia as being behind the eight ball. I think, uh, at the risk of being accused of being biased, I think we've uh, we've set a model for um, best practice in terms of managing the pandemic uh, from a whole of government perspective, SA Health and SA Police, SES and the other agencies that have been involved, DPC. Um, their decisions around mask wearing are based on the advice they get from their health officer. Our mask wearing decisions are based on the advice we get from Professor Spurrier. And uh, whilst I acknowledge the frustration and inconvenience and sometimes discomfort of wearing a mask, I certainly accept the advice I've been provided that they are the first line of defence in relation to dealing with a pandemic. Well, at this point in time, that rule remains, but I think we need to acknowledge that round one of the AFL season for Adelaide Oval is still some time away. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of space between now and then. So there could be changes that see relaxations in mask wearing at that point in time. But right at right at this point, if there was an event to be held at Adelaide Oval, the mask requirements and other COVID management plan requirements that apply to Adelaide Oval would still be applicable. Second, December, the difference between the transition committee and the COVID ready committee was explained as being that. The former was more about easing of restrictions and the latter was more of the sort of macro things around borders and return to normal. Has, based on what we're hearing today, having met with the COVID ready committee, are we to assume that that is now the correctly usurped the functions of the transition committee? Uh, I think that's a fair assumption. Um, I think the Premier has indicated previously that uh, transition committee would cease um, when we got to that 90% mark for vaccinations. We have hit that 90% mark. Transition Committee has not met since then, but CRC has um, been meeting regularly and has probably overtaken some of the roles of the uh, Transition Committee. What about the people who have tested positive for COVID? Has there been any discussion around that time frame for them having to quarantine and also um, the time period that they can be excluded from being a close contact? Are you look at relaxing some of those rules? Uh, there was no discussion about the implications of a person um, who is COVID positive um, being excluded as a close, close contact today. We did briefly discuss uh, whether or not there was scope to um, consider changes to the isolation period for COVID positive people and the quarantine period for people who are identified as close contacts. So Professor Spurrier uh, 
will probably take that away and give further consideration to that and may come up in future meetings, but there was no decision today. Was there any discussion about the work from home directive? Uh, it was briefly discussed in terms of what the current percentages are and what the scope is to increase that, but there was no decision made in COVID Ready Committee and that is not a part of the directions. Uh, it would be a matter for um, uh, the Premier and Cabinet to make a determination on that and communicate that. Do you expect that this decision may be looked at as you know, more regularly than every fortnight? If there was uh, some compelling factor that warranted uh, that sort of consideration between now and two weeks' time, then it would certainly happen. And that's an obligation that sits with me in terms of making sure that the directions in place are necessary and proportionate for the type of emergency we're dealing with. So if there was something that changed between now and a fortnight, then I would be compelled to make sure that is considered and those changes were made as, as early as possible. And that would go either way? Either uh, either it could go either way. You mentioned that uh, people around the table have different views that they express and take into account. Has the election ever been discussed as a particular deadline in the course of no. the No, no. I, I can say uh, unequivocally that uh, the election does not feature into my considerations in terms of when these decisions are being made or announced. Uh, these decisions are on the basis of how South Australia is performing in relation to dealing with COVID-19 and the necessity for the restrictions being in place. And as I just said, my obligations are to ensure that we are responsive to the changing circumstances and the, the restrictions or directions are modified to suit those circumstances at the earliest opportunity. So there's no... Um, the only time the election's been spoken about is when we spoke about uh, enabling people to vote who may be subject to quarantine or isolation requirements. Okay, thanks, thanks, everyone.